Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live for day three coverage of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is Silicon Angles, theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from noise. Live in Vancouver, British Columbia for the OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman from Wikibon.com. Our next guest is Boris Rensky, CMO, co-founder of Marantis. Welcome back to theCUBE. Great to see you. Got your jersey on, the Canadian shirt. That's right. You That's guys are kicking ass, taking names here at OpenStack again. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good to be back. We are um, proud to see you guys being so successful in the marketplace and uh, we've been following you guys and you know, there's always Marantis is doing this and you guys had some naysayers, okay, early on and you guys had yes. great success. You have proven domain expertise in OpenStack. You guys had great domain expertise in wiring it together but now with the growth, you're delivering value to customers. Absolutely. Give us the update. Why are you winning? You stayed true to your, your, your mission. What's, what, give us your take on all this. Yeah, well, I think that uh, I've, I've mentioned this before. Um, we uh, kind of um, did not fall into the uh, trap of uh, following the uh, you know, standard uh, VC playbook for building a company. Um, and we understood that the market they're playing in is, uh, is an open source market. So the approach we took is uh, uh, we actually um, you know, started monetizing slowly with services. We started making money right away. We didn't push product onto people. Um, we kind of wedged ourselves into pretty much every single production bound deployment of OpenStack out there as a services company, as kind of like the Switzerland of OpenStack. We learned from our customers and then gradually we leverage that understanding of how they actually use OpenStack to start slowly building up our product. And um, going forward, uh, we kind of remain convinced that this is a, a long-term game. It's not the kind of thing where you, know, you invent something, you patent something, and then you sell it for a billion dollars. I think that the path to success in OpenStack is uh, similar to um, you know, the path to success that uh, um, you know, companies like Red Hat have traversed um, in the Linux space. Um, it took them, what, like 10 years to get to a billion dollars, so we understand that uh, to be able to win in this market, um, you have to be, you have to have a staying power, and um, you have to have uh, the right combination of uh, kind of uh, momentum and agility. Um, and that's kind of, you know, the reason why we've uh, raised this monster $100 million round um, six months ago. Uh, we don't intend to just kind of, you know, blow all of this money right away. We're very conscious about how we're spending, and. Uh, um, you know, we, we're kind of running the company to make sure that there is at least a very clear, um, you know, five-year horizon as to how we're going to evolve and uh, build the business. And, and I think that's been paying off. And the market's evolving with you, so it's one of these situations where the VC playbook would be, give me some product, I want to see some monetization, and you guys yeah. are sticking with your formula, but the product market's still evolving, so there's still opportunities with some headroom for you guys, but also more importantly, the demand for OpenStack quickly to stand up OpenStack beyond right. POCs. Correct. Talk about that dynamic. Um, so the demand to stand up OpenStack beyond POCs, it's, so on that note, um, you know, and kind of, you know, relating back to my point of kind of slow and steady, um, you know, we've applied the same philosophy to actually building our um, installer um, and manager for OpenStack, um, which is Fuel, which is now, you know, an OpenStack project, kind of we're developing it under the OpenStack umbrella. Um, and um, we've been on this thing for probably now three and a half years. And while we were kind of steadily and consciously evolving it, there's been a whole bunch of kind of, you know, dynamic in this installer market. So we've seen uh, Canonical push Juju very aggressively. We've seen community kind of start with Packstack and then there's been, you know, Triple O and then Red Hat doubling down on Triple O and then HP kind of backing out of Triple O. In the meantime, we continue to kind of slowly push on uh, our our way to you know, deploy OpenStack, which is Fuel. And uh, according to the recent um, um, OpenStack user survey, which Foundation just published, Fuel is now the number one OpenStack specific deployment tool. So if you look at uh, just the list of uh, uh, tools that are being used to deploy and manage OpenStack, you know, number one naturally is Puppet, but it's more of a kind of generic configuration management tool. Um, number two is Ansible, and then comes Fuel, um, ahead of Chef. 
And um, I think that uh, you know this kind of slow and steady approach is uh, key to winning um, in, in open source across the board, be it how you structure the company or how you appro approach a product strategy. Yeah, so Boris, it's interesting. I, I, I like the slow and steady. Uh, I'm also seeing branches pop up in a lot of new environments. So, you know, Cloud Foundry, uh, yes. you, you guys are part of what's going there. Uh, a lot of partnership announcements this week. Uh, I think you're doing a great job of getting the brand out there as all the other big guys are coming into OpenStack. So, how do you manage that? You know, you've only got so many resources and where, where you can put your effort, uh, you know, with kind of your marketing hat on. You know, yeah, where, yeah. where's the primary effort go? Um, so here, I think, uh, is where we kind of play our, what I call, you know, the pure play card. And um, a lot of people get this um, um, wrong notion about uh, how we're trying to play the market. As I was saying, with pure play, that means we partner with absolutely everybody, and everybody is our friend, but that's not exactly true. Uh, the, way, the way we approach this is um, um, by, by being pure play vendor, we are in a very unique position to, instead of, um, you know, focusing our um, kind of uh, integration efforts um, on uh, those infrastructure providers and solution providers that are part of our existing um, product portfolio. We focus them on those that are most in demand. And uh, we've recently announced, for instance, um, you know, partnership with uh, Cloud Foundry, with Pivotal CF specifically, we joined Cloud Foundry Foundation. So the reason we did that is because we believe, and we see it from our customers, is that the Cloud Foundry, th these guys, they have the mind share of the customers when it comes to platforms as a service. Now, our number one competitor, Red Hat, an OpenStack space, they unfortunately cannot do that because they have OpenShift. And uh, you know, I can keep listing examples where there is um, certain solutions or infrastructure components that are the ones that customers need, but our competitors simply cannot invest in uh, integrating with those because this is going to go against the grain of their current company direction. Um, so that's, you know, it's not, we don't partner with everybody. So, you know, if you look at uh, um, the uh, Mirantis Unlocked Partner Program, which is our technology solutions partners, um, there's 47 partners there. It's not so many. If you look at, uh, you know, um, I don't know, again, going back to Red Hat, they probably have hundreds or something. Yeah, sure. So yeah. we, we actually uh, focus I, I on the ones. thousands of partners usually when they do something. Thousands, so. exactly. Yeah. So we so actually focus on those that are most important to OpenStack adopters and spend resources on high quality integrations with those partners. All right, so, so Boris, you know, coming into the show, if we felt there was a lot of misconceptions about where OpenStack was, where things were going, talked about some of the things in the press. You know, wh wh where do you think we are coming out of this week here? Uh, do you think we've shown a lot of proof points there? You know, what's the reality on the ground that you're seeing and talking to customers about when it comes to OpenStack? Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So I think that um, there's this constant pressure, um, I think, uh, by the market for OpenStack to show more real customers, more enterprise customers, et cetera. And I think that there's a certain notion um, in the community and uh, within the foundation that uh, um, you, know, you just have to keep doing that. Um, and I, I think that uh, you know, it's it just some time has to pass for this to go away. I think that uh, every single summit at this point, you have uh, you know marquee customers like you know Wells Fargo, Comcast, eBay, etc. on stage talking about uh, you know the, the the scale that they use OpenStack at, and you know PayPal recently announced that yes, they are actually you know standardizing on OpenStack, and all of their you know uh, production workloads are now OpenStack eight and a half thousand hypervisors in OpenStack. I think that um, there's, no, there's no need for additional proof points that OpenStack is real. But having said that, I think that uh, now the summit is kind of a, um, a very important point of um, evolution in the OpenStack community. If you look up until now, um, most of the OpenStack story and most of OpenStack hype has been driven by um, vendors kind of, um, you know, proclaiming their commitment to OpenStack. Like Cisco, we're committing billion dollars to OpenStack. HP, we're committing billion dollars to OpenStack. Every week, you'll have a new infrastructure vendor come in and announce that they're, you know, doing a driver for OpenStack or something like that. And this summit, um, I'm glad to see that actually the uh, OpenStack Foundation and the community is starting to see that it's not just about the infrastructure and vendor side of things, it's also about the uh, workload and developer side of things. So we saw uh, Mark Collier come on stage uh, on Tuesday and announce the uh, community marketplace. So um, we were one of the folks um, inside the community that were kind of helping put this together. Uh, many others were involved kind of helping us push this ahead. But uh, um, 
I think that we're coming to this point where the next wave of OpenStack evolution is going to be less about the you know, NetApps and EMCs of the world announcing that, yes, we do OpenStack now, and it's going to be about uh, actually the application vendors um, and the software vendors saying that, yes, now our software runs on OpenStack. Yes, now you know, our solution, Hadoop, you know, Cloudera Hadoop is now in the uh, um, community marketplace. Um, you know, Pivotal Cloud Foundry is now in community marketplace. You know, Kubernetes now in marketplace, et cetera. So we're, we're kind of it's evolving towards the developer and application side of things. Yeah, if I could just uh, talk about OpenStack growth. If you look at the public cloud market, you know, one of the challenges there is it's really North America heavy. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that's really impressive about OpenStack is, you know, it really is trying to build a global effort. If you look at just the summit itself, you know, yeah. it goes to North America, it, it goes, you know, to other places, you know, going to be in Tokyo in six months. Um, you know, you, you guys help put together the OpenStack Silicon Valley because there's a lot that goes on there. Yeah. Um, you know, is OpenStack going to have more success than public cloud globally? Any commentary on that? Um, well, I think that, um, you know, I, I don't think that's entirely correct to just, you know, compare OpenStack to public cloud yeah. because there's OpenStack powering some of the, you know, bigger public clouds fair, out there. Fair so point, absolutely. Know, like rack space for the guys that, that started OpenStack. But um, I think that uh, basically, you know, the, the way I see OpenStack evolving um, is um, I see it as one of the uh, um, kind of, um, you know, th there's this notion of data center operating system, right? So I believe that this is going to be one of the fabrics, one of the one of the data center operating systems out there, um, and um, I don't think it's going to be the only one. Um, I think that uh, actually, you know, Amazon, you can think of that as kind of a you know an, a data center operating system, only fully integrated with the entire hardware stack. So you know, if I was to compare Amazon, Amazon is like. A, like a you know like a, like a mainframe or maybe like you know like a, like an iPhone where it's completely integrated, whereas OpenStack is just a software for it. And going into the future, there's going to be you know different types of fabrics, right? There's going to be like the Amazon fabric. There's going to be uh, a number of flavors of the OpenStack fabrics. Maybe there's going to be something else that we'll see. Uh, but uh, this notion of uh, actually you know uh, the world transforming from uh, being you know server centric to being data center centric is what ultimately is powering all of this movement. Where are you guys winning right now? I mean, obviously, uh, we heard from Patrick Riley at uh, his company, you know, with Kubernetes, standing up through the appliances is a, is a, is a tactic. Client, what's going on in the customer environment? And, and why, are you, why are you winning and where are you winning? Um, so, we are winning um, across three sectors, and those are the three sectors that, uh, you know, we believe, but, you know, we have kind of, you know, our narrow, maybe, point of view. Um, that, that, are, that are the key sectors for, for OpenStack. So the first one was Web and SaaS. So, you know, WebEx, uh, worked with PayPal, um, Workday, et cetera, this kind of customers. Um, second sector is actually Telco. Um, and uh, third, uh, something that we refer to as uh, the techie enterprises. So basically, um, traditional enterprise customers that historically have uh, invested pretty heavily in, uh, um, in technology. So financial services, um, e-retail, um, media, um, all of those organizations that are forced to kind of uh, reinvent themselves through technology. And uh, the interesting thing is that, um, you know, um, people ask kind of about the use cases. So what is the use case for web and SaaS? What is the use case for telco? Is it an FV? Um, what's the use case for financial services? Um, the use case that we see primarily is really the same across all of these sectors. And that use case is OpenStack as a, basically a developer platform. So all of these organizations, they kind of, you know, they see the benefits of something like Amazon. Um, many of them cannot do or will not do uh, a public cloud, period. Uh, but uh, they understand that they're kind of forced to compete with a startup, with a technology startup, and they're forced to enable uh, their internal development organizations to be very agile. Um, so be it, you know, um, web and SaaS guys like, you know, Workday or PayPal, same exact problem, um, agility for their development organization. Um, if you look at telco space, there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of uh, directional statements about uh, NFV, 
Uh, but I think that uh, the real use case, at least across the customers that we see where they're running OpenStack in production, the use case again is enabling internal development organizations. Um, and uh, you know, tech enterprises, exact same thing. So it's, it's really kind of you know, um, um, a horizontal platform for, for various, for various uh, segments. Talk about the OpenStack community and also talk about the event that you're running uh, in Silicon Valley. Last year you guys had a real innovative event, really a big void in the OpenStack community is no Silicon Valley event yeah, present. Yeah, yeah. So you guys ran OpenStack SV last year, um, huge success. You got one coming up. Yes. Share some insights into what's going on with that event and what's what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So again, like I don't want it to be to sound like it's not it's not our event. This is an event. This is something that uh, you know we've we've helped pitch to the foundation and we're working together with the foundation to organize it. We've you know contributed quite a bit to uh, organizing it. But uh, again, you know, we put Robert, resources into it. We put resources into it, but but foundation also puts resources into it, and you know they put resources in the form of you know foundation members on stage as well as you know Robert Caffey. He is there kind of helping organize the event as well. Well, but yes, so it's um, a community event, not a Morantis. It's a, it's, yeah, and it's very important. Exactly. So for us, it's very important that it's not going to be perceived as like you know the Morantis event. That is a completely community event. But the you reason guys spearheaded it. Just to be fair, you yeah, saw the we, opportunity. Yeah, exactly. We spearheaded it. Um, we spearheaded it, and uh, we had uh, you know absolutely kind of just super successful event last year. Uh, we are doing it again this year, the week before VMworld, August 26th, 27th. Um, this time we're expanding it. It's going to be two days. We're expecting much bigger crowd. Um, and it's really kind of, you know, the, the high quality. Trucks. More food, <laughs> more, more food trucks, exactly. <laughs> yeah, more food trucks, you know, smaller lines, hopefully. <laughs> yes, that's that's right. That was a huge but success last yeah. year. You guys had a great event. I mean, but but this is the thing, right? The community, you guys, has saw an opportunity like Cloudera did with Hadoop World, yeah, to to bring people together locally in Silicon Valley with the act some action there, obviously there. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And because Silicon Valley, in our opinion, is really kind of, you know, the heart of a lot of things in OpenStack, simply because, I mean, Silicon Valley is like the, the heart of the technology industry. Um, and um, because, as Stu mentioned, OpenStack is a global phenomenon, uh, Foundation actually has to make the summit travel across different locations. So there's only so often that they can do it, you know, in the heart of, you know, the, the technology, right? So, so we kind of took it upon ourselves to, you know, kind of help probe the foundation to put together this event, and we're doing it again. Everybody's going to be there, very much looking forward to it. All right, now what's next for the community? In your mind, you guys have been an active participant. You know, in some cases, you know, ruffling, ruffling some feathers here and there with your business model, which was contrarian at the time, but now it's people are giving you guys props for that. You stick to your, your focus. The community, what's your take this year on the ground here at OpenStack Summit? What's the vibe? What's the community like? Is, what's the heartbeat like? Is it pumping on all cylinders? What's happening? Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely pumping on all cylinders. Um, I think that, um, you know, there's, there's some maybe uh, negative rumblings around, um, you know, the recent uh, consolidation that has happened in the market. Um, we think that, you know, that's kind of the natural phenomenon. So naturally, you know, some of the, some of the smaller guys were acquired, uh, some were acqui hired, but uh, there's, there's kind of no way around it. Um, aside of all of this, um, I think that we're seeing uh, what, like 20% more uh, still uh, increase in attendance for, for this OpenStack Summit versus the previous one in Paris. Um, we can see, um, you know, the, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, like OpenStack, because it's so big, it's becoming uh, um, not just about uh, exclusively, you know, OpenStack itself, but it's becoming the hub for all of the different uh, open source communities to kind of come together. So you see people, you know, from, from Linux here, you see people from the new cool communities like, you know, the Google Kubernetes community, you know, the Mesos community, all the Docker people, all the stuff. So, and there's a lot of the discussion around how OpenStack works works with all of these adjacent communities. Um, so it's, it's, you know, I think that kind of OpenStack took the, uh, uh, the, the flag of, of being like this, you know, the, the, the central open infrastructure thing. And then there's a lot of kind of, you know, satellite communities that are now starting, but they're all kind of, you know, kind of glued onto OpenStack as a central thing. And that's what I'm seeing. And that's what's empowering the OpenStack community to continue growing. Boris, you know we love about, we love conversations, we love the crowd chat, we love getting we'll find out what's happening on the ground in, in the communities. What are the top conversations that you're involved in with customers? What, and, and what is the language of the customer? They don't talk about I need some infrastructure as a service, I want some platform as a service, I want some SaaS. I mean that's just the cloud. This is they they have different views. What is the language of the customer and what conversations are you involved in? And, and share some insights into that. 
Yeah, sure. So um, I think that um, the conversations have clearly been, as OpenStack has been maturing, they've been evolving from uh, kind of, you know, techy and very, uh, you know, infrastructure and, you know, OpenStack centric conversations to more of the conversations um, around business value. So if before, um, you know, you'd go into a customer and, you know, most of the questions you'd have to answer were around, uh, you know, well, explain to me, you know, how you can stand up OpenStack for me so that it works. You know, what, what projects are you going to, you know, incorporate and what, what's how, you know, how you're going to go about it. Now, uh, many more questions are around actually the business value of OpenStack, uh, the uh, new workloads that you can run on top of OpenStack. Um, and, uh, you know, just the general concept of how OpenStack can uh, unlock um, kind of the, this, this, you know, developer agility and uh, um, engineering velocity inside the organizations more so than, you know, some alternatives. Have you seen the crossover from POCs to much more deeper production capabilities? Is that what you're seeing more of that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I wish I could give you a more elaborate answer to that, but... Uh, you yeah, name so names. <laughs> <laughs> Which companies? <laughs> um, yeah, sure, I mean, I can... Uh, I'll be careful, you know, I'm known to uh, <laughs> kind of, you spill know, the beans a little spill, bit, yeah. spill the beans, you're probing me there, but, uh, you know, so, I mean, I think that, uh, um, you know, so Wells Fargo is, uh, is, a, is a big customer of ours. They are also on stage um, talking about OpenStack. Um, American Express, um, very heavily involved with OpenStack. We work with American Express. Uh, they have real kind of a production stuff. AT&T is a big customer, you know, far beyond POCs um, doing some serious OpenStack stuff. I mean, I can, I can yeah. keep naming, but You're winning. I'll, You're I'll, I'll be careful wins. to, you know. <laughs> but you guys are knocking down some good deals against some absolutely. of the bigger guys. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right, Boris, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's the end of the day. Everyone's kind of reaching for that, that last gasp here at the summit here. Thanks for coming on and looking forward to the event uh, in August, it is? August, right August, before August 26th, 27th. In Open Silicon, Valley. Silicon Valley. Computer History Museum, Computer same venue. Computer History Museum, same thing, yeah. only bigger and better. Smart move, double down, and bring in the foundation, make it an industry event. <laughs> Congratulations, Boris Rensky, C C CMO, co-founder of Marantis. Uh, really good example of success in the market. Congratulations. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more after the short break. <laughs>